Hi, this is Travis here at Exercise Lab with another video for you guys. I'm a doctor of physical therapy for those of you who don't know me. And today I want to introduce a fairly new product called the Chop Handle by What's That Strap. And it has some pretty cool applications. You know, somebody might see one of these and wonder, do I even need this thing? It lo looks fairly simple in its design. But I think it does have some pretty cool applications. You know, because of this essentially two handle configuration that it has, you can definitely generate a lot more rotational strength and power than you could with just kind of that single cable that you might see a lot of people doing chops with. And so I'll be showing you what I mean by that today. And it's not just for athletes, although obviously this does have a lot of athletic applications for increasing rotational strength and power. You know, anti-rotation strength, as they call it, or essentially stabilization, can also be very important for rehab, you know, applications. And so I'll be talking a little bit about how you can also use it maybe in rehab-related ways, sort of diagnosing maybe some strength imbalances you have because you can essentially work your core muscles in so many different planes with this thing. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about what I'm talking about, go ahead and stay tuned and we'll get started. Okay, so before I get into this chop handle specifically, I wanna talk about more, you know, just general chopping. And I wanna talk about basically all the different ways you can do it and why you might wanna do one versus the other. So, you know, depending on the adjustability of the cable machine that you have, you know, there's all kinds of gradations. I could start up here, you know, I could even bring it down, you know, essentially a couple of inches, I could do it there. And you might wonder, you know, where should I put it? You know, I think about it basically in three main camps. And so anytime that, you know, anchor is going to be higher, you know, than eye level, essentially, I would consider that more your, you know, high to low chop somewhere in that neck of the woods. And so essentially when I pull this thing down, I'm pulling in the direction of gravity. And so gravity is kind of facilitating that chop. You know, from there, you know, you can pull it down somewhere in the vicinity of your chest, you know, chest to navel, even a little higher is fine. I consider anywhere in that vicinity more of your, you know, horizontal or kind of a mid chop. And then anything below that, you know, definitely below the waistline, if I had this thing down here and I'm basically now pulling against gravity, I would consider that, you know, essentially a low to high chop. And so those are the three main camps, you know, as far as where you want to spend your time. You know, if you're somebody coming off of a back injury, I would say you're going to probably want to spend your time initially in the high to low going into mid just because gravity is gonna be going with you and that tends to be a little bit gentler on the back versus when I'm pulling against gravity and more that low to high, you know, that's a little more like a lifting kind of movement and lifting can sometimes be a little more provocative on somebody who has a bad back. So as a rule of thumb, I would say that's gonna be probably an easier place to start. Now, if you're more of an athlete and you don't have any back considerations and you're just looking to kind of build up strength, well, that's kind of the obvious one. You're gonna to wanna to spend time, you know, wherever you essentially need it in gameplay. So if I'm spending more of my swinging strength down here, I'm gonna probably wanna spend a bit more time maybe you know, generating that power in that low to high direction, you know, versus if I'm somebody who, you know, for whatever reason, I'm, I'm pulling sacks, you know, down, you know, maybe off of, you know, a loading dock or something, and I had to pull from this direction, well, then maybe I'd wanna do sort of a high to low. So, you know, it might also just depend on what kind of tasks you're doing on a regular basis, you know. Say if I was a nurse, for instance, and I had to maybe, you know, be lifting patients, you know, from a, a lower position, you know, I might want to build up again that low to high strength. And, you know, again, I know nurses are not encouraged to necessarily have to do that, but the reality is sometimes you do. And so if I wanted to build up strength in that direction, I would probably be trying to spend some time there working against gravity a little bit more. So again, that's just kind of a general two cents on how you can structure your chops. And again, if you're more of a generalist, you know, you can just kind of find an angle and place that feels good. I will spend the majority of my time personally, again, probably high to low mid every now and then more just to maintain my strength i'll do some low to high but i don't necessarily train low to high as much and again that's just kind of a personal preference me trying to be a little bit easier on my back but still build up some degree of rotational strength and stability okay so once you've decided you know what type of chop you're going to do again high to low low to high all that stuff the next thing to figure out is well what position do you want to be in do i want to be standing or do i want to be kneeling because you'll see a lot of people sometimes in gyms and any of you who watch other, you know, rehab related videos and things of different natures, you know, even sports, you know, sometimes you'll see people down here in what we know is a half kneeling position. Sometimes you'll see people in more of a tall kneeling position. And so, you know, if I had this cable here, you know, I might pull it down like so. Okay. And that would be a tall kneeling. And, you know, the reason why essentially you would want to do one versus the other, you're narrowing your basis support. I'm also taking out, you know, essentially the muscle below my knee a little more. I still get some hip in this position, you know, as I would if I were in a half kneeling, I'm definitely still going to get some hips, but not as much because essentially I've, I've lowered my center of mass significantly. And so I'm not going to have as much to chew on with my lower half versus when I'm standing now, my lower body's got to be quite a bit more engaged. And so I'm going to engage a lot more, I would say hip and thigh, as well as even calf, you know, kind of ankle, you know, foot ankle muscles. And so there might be a time and a place for one versus the other. Now, if I was trying to really emphasize somebody who maybe 
I wanted to work on their oblique strength specifically a little bit more than I was really concerned with hip strength. You know, I might pull them into a tall kneeling position. So my goal is definitely to try to get people on their feet and standing as, as you know early as I can or as soon as I think that's appropriate. You know, in some other videos, you may even see people sitting on a box or a chair. So sometimes they're, they're sitting as they're doing this. And that would be somebody who, you know, couldn't get into a kneeling position and maybe their standing is not going to be so, so good or maybe they're not going to be safe doing that. Um, I would say that's a pretty limited application, though. I don't really do a lot of that. Um, but again, if I did have somebody for whatever reason, they couldn't stand, but they also couldn't kneel, you know, I might put them on a chair. Um, but most of the time, especially if I'm working with somebody who's higher level and athletic, we're going to be spending most of the time on the feet. If I did think for some reason, you know, watching them do something, maybe I noticed that they might have some weakness suggested, you know, more in the, in the core area, or I'm trying to emphasize that, you know, and sometimes what I'll do actually, and in, in, in my own training, what I would say that I do most of the time is I just check my strength in half kneeling or tall kneeling like I am now. So I might come in here and I might do an exercise every now and then just to kind of make sure I'm still good. And if I'm good, my strength is pretty symmetrical. I kind of back off. I go back to standing for, you know, several weeks and then maybe I come back to it again just to kind of check myself out. So I kind of use it almost more diagnostically of just kind of seeing where is my strength at. You know, I'll do a few different, you know, angles at, in maybe a half kneeling versus a tall kneeling. You know, sometimes I like this version called, the, I call it a kickstand where I'll bring my leg out, you know, almost kind of more like, you know, there used to be a wrestler named Shawn Michaels and he did a pose like this. And I kind of like to do this position just because I like the fact that it gets my adductors and kind of the groin muscles a little bit more. And, you know, hockey players, for instance, have a lot of groin pulls. So, you know, that might be applicable to somebody like that. I also just kind of like to throw it in there once in a while. So I don't see a lot of people doing that variation. And sometimes I'll do it in my own training. But for the most part, I'm going to do this video standing up because of the fact that I think it's just more it's more functional. It's going to carry over more to athletics. It's going to carry more over to real life. So that's my two cents on kneeling versus standing, sitting, and all that good stuff. Okay, and so now that I just got done telling you guys I'm going to be mostly standing, I'm going to do the kneeling exercise first. The reason I'm going to do that is because I think this is a pretty cool exercise that's harder to do when you're standing, just because the cable systems oftentimes don't reach that high. Now, some people might have cable systems, particularly those of you who are in a commercial gym where they have those, you know, movable arms and you can put those cables up pretty high over your head. You could do this one standing as well. Unfortunately, the pulley system I have just doesn't go high enough relative to my height. And so I have to do some versions kneeling for that reason. This is one of the exercises I'll do, probably one of the main ones. And so what I'll do is I'll basically orient my body so that I'm essentially 180 degrees from the anchor point. Okay. And again, I'm not really a zealot about these angles. You know, some people try to get very granular and, and specific about it. You know, the main angles I'm going to use, and I'll talk about this in the video, you know, I'll use essentially perpendicular. I'll use, you know, sometimes parallel. Sometimes I'll go, you know, an angle in between. And again, it just really depends on where I think things feel the best. I'm not necessarily, again, looking at, oh, my 45 degrees or 35. I don't really care about that stuff. I just try to go in the vicinity and I'll do the mirror image of that when I'm working the other side. So for right now, I'm about 180. I come in here with this cable attachment and I'm going to pull it down like this. Now, the one thing I should also mention is sometimes things lend themselves a little bit better to a press versus a chop. And so what I'll show you the difference. So if I were to pull, keep this in close to my body and then kind of punch it at the end, okay, I would consider that a little more of a press. Versus if I kept my arms straight and let this thing come up behind me and then I pulled it down from there, I would consider that more of a chop, okay? And as you can see, if I follow this thing through, I'm going to re-rack it. So I would need to move this out a little bit, okay? And sometimes this will happen to you guys, so you might need to adjust in the moment. And then I would come down in here, okay? Let it take me back a little bit if I want. Now, again, if I was trying to really prevent movement, I would try to keep my torso fairly locked in as I did this, come down and maybe do a press, okay? Now, when I have this thing in more of a chopping version, that's going to be quite a bit more torque and stress on my back potentially. So your core muscles are going to have to be really ready for that. So one of the things I should also mention um, before I get too far into this with chopping is I'm not doing this for like traditional strength. I'm definitely not doing you know, less than five repetitions. I'm not even really doing less than 10. My rep ranges are usually 10 or more when I'm doing chops. And if you think about it logically, most sport applications, most rehab applications, you probably want more strength endurance, so to speak, in these muscle groups than pure strength. You know, you're going to get some overlap. So it's not to say if you're doing 15 to 20 reps, it's going to be exclusively like endurance. You're still going to get some strength. But I think you're going to get it in a way that's going to put less penalty on the joints in the low back. And then the other thing you're going to do is hopefully 
enable yourself to just be ready for you know more repetitive stress type of activities in daily life and so again we know those are associated with back pain right so when people are repetitively bending over and over again eventually the straw breaks the camel's back and then off they go now with these exercises you're going to hopefully be training the strength in a way that minimizes the risks of those types of things happening so you're kind of using this as a way to make yourself more durable for those types of activities but that being said you could also hurt yourself with these as well so you want to really be make sure, making sure that you're ready for these exercises meaning that if you think your form is not that good i wouldn't be going to town on these i wouldn't be doing a lot of aggressive rotation uh, for those of you who have back considerations i would try to build up your core strength and core stability first in more of an anti-rotation meaning you're basically locking your position in as you're moving your arms in whatever plane you're doing once you start to get that figured out then you can kind of let your torso start to follow the tension a little bit and i'll show you what i mean by that in a minute and then gradually, as you're getting stronger there, you can increase the amplitude or essentially the you know, excursion or the degree of your movement where maybe initially I'm just allowing my body to move with this cable system a little bit. And then gradually over time, I go a little bit farther. I would say you don't want to go to end range though. So don't necessarily wind yourself way up, you know, if it, and because sometimes obviously with weight, you're going to be able to take yourself farther than you would otherwise. And you're going to take your joints to end range. And again, then things can sometimes work against you, you know, from an injury perspective. So when in doubt on these chops, I would say tread carefully. Make sure you're really, you know, a little more deliberate, I'd say, about building up some of your rotational strength than you might be with other exercises. You know, if you're doing a dumbbell curl, I would say you can be <laughs> a little bit less cautious as far as, you know, okay, I'm going to try to go up today versus if it's a cable thing and I'm saying, okay, I'm going to try to increase, you know, load today or I'm going to try to increase, you know, the, the range of motion today. Those are the things you want to make sure you're just a bit more ready for because obviously the last thing you want to do is injure yourself while you're trying to get stronger. Okay, so again, now that we've gotten that out of the way, I'm going to let this thing take me back maybe a little bit now, okay? And I can actually feel myself racking it here, and that's fine. Again, if I didn't like the way that felt. And so this thing is basically trying to have me overextend my back and rotate me towards the side, you know, that this thing is anchored on. And so by me preventing that, or maybe going with it a little bit, I'm trying to strengthen myself in the, in the opposite direction. So I'm really working actually more of my rectus here. I'm working my lats as I pull it down. And then as I punch it out, you know, you're getting that chest shoulder muscle. So it's just nice because you're getting a lot of muscle in one shot and strengthening yourself in a way that's fairly unique. You're not necessarily going to be able to tap into those muscles so easily with other exercises, you know. And so I think that's really a cool exercise to kind of let that thing pull you up and back a little bit and then sort of chop it down and obviously vice versa on the other side, making sure that strength is somewhat symmetrical. Okay, so going back to standing now. So again, I'm gonna cover again, you know, kind of high to low right now, since that's where I've got the cable anchored. You know, a, a simple one that I like to do is more what I would call like a scooping exercise. So I can either be here, I like to have my bottom hand supinated as they call it. And again, I'll typically step back on the side I'm pulling towards just so I have a little more room. And this is almost the equivalent of like when you're doing you know, essentially a pull down more a straight arm pull down only difference is i'm pulling it down now here to the side so there's a little bit more of a rotational component which i like and again you can decide how offset you want to be you know if your stance is tighter versus wider you know one's going to be easier typically wider is going to be easier but then it's going to be kind of awkward because you hit your thigh so you tend to be a little bit tight on this one and then just kind of let this thing follow you up not a lot of rotation here so you know if i had somebody in a rehab situation, I probably wouldn't have them in such an aggressive angle. You know, I might have them just bending forward a little bit and maybe starting with kind of a small amplitude of movement. And then gradually as you get better, you know, you can come into this and you could even try to put, you know, a little bit of body weight into it. You know, something like this, for instance. And, you know, obviously I could put the load a little higher if I wanted to, but again, I'm looking more for high reps typically on these. So I don't need to go super high. You know, this one, there isn't a lot of rotational component, so I could probably be a little more aggressive with my weight selection on an exercise like this if I wanted to, versus if I came down here and it had more of a chop now. So again, this would be considered more of a perpendicular chop, or you could think of it as a 90 degree chop where I'm coming down in here. And again, I could be, I like to call this a kickstand position. So, you know, initially you could start out tighter, gradually go a little wider if you wanted to. And again, narrower tends to be harder than wider. So... I could be a little narrow and I could pull this down here. And now if I were to follow this band, I can get a little bit of active rotation as I pull this through. Now your torso tends to follow your eyes. So if you look towards the cable attachment, 
that's one way to get that rotation. Otherwise, it's kind of awkward if I'm looking straight down at a fixed point and I'm trying to turn my torso, it just gets a little weird. So typically I'll just look toward the anchor point and then pull down. But again, a lot of times I like to stick kind of more in the anti-rotation category with just a little follow through with the torso, okay? And then, you know, obviously checking my symmetry, I would flip around and then do the other side. And sometimes what people will do is they'll do this a little more dynamically where I might pivot my feet. And so what I could do is I could either pivot my feet to kind of follow and I'll show the footwork here. So I could have my stance here and I would have to be a little farther away. I could pivot my foot, okay? Or I could have my foot here and I could just pivot my back foot, okay? And that would be a way to increase rotational power a little more dynamically. I'm not actually getting a lot of twisting there, if you notice, because when I pivot, it's actually just kind of my torso just following through. So the amount of rotation in my back is actually a little bit less. So I like that movement because it basically actually works a little more core stabilization, okay? And again, it's a little awkward and you have to rotate both feet. So I actually do kind of like having that front foot already planted in that forward direction. And then off you go. And again, I could decide if I wanted to be a little wider here. Okay, sometimes that might not feel as awkward. So sometimes you have to play around with the footwork a little bit on these. And then once you've done it a few times, you can kind of dial in, you know, your spacing and things of that nature. At the end of the day, as long as you feel it in the muscles you're trying to get after, but you had a pretty good workout, you're probably fine. Okay, so now we're kind of in mid-chop territory. And, you know, this exercise called the Paloff Press obviously got a lot of attention. It was a very popular exercise. You essentially stand perpendicular and then you would do something like this, you know. Now, you could, in theory, do a Paloff Press with this as well. You know, pressing both handles, you know, if you wanted to do something like that. Um, but again, you could also just do a more conventional chop, or maybe I've staggered my stance, kind of almost in that, you know, kickstand type of position. And I could bring this around here. And again, sometimes what I'll do on these is I'll play around my angles a little bit. So even at a fixed anchor point, I can come, you know, a little high versus across versus a little low. And so sometimes, depending on where I'm at, I may choose one angle versus the other. Okay, but if I was really just trying to develop strength, you know, in this plane for some reason, then obviously that's where I'd want to spend my time. And so similar to that last exercise, what I could do is I could pre-position my foot to be in the direction that I'm going to pivot, and I could do some sort of a pivot motion. Okay, and so that would look fairly similar to the one we just did, only now I'm not really going with gravity as much. I'm pretty much just kind of staying in a horizontal plane, so I'm getting a little more pure, you know, weight on the rack, so to speak as opposed to maybe that high low chop I showed you guys a minute ago. And now to be honest, this is probably the, I would say position I spend the least amount of my time in. I'm probably, I know I said earlier, I'm kind of more high to low and mid. I'm probably even less mid now that I think about it because I just don't feel like for me, having strength purely in this plane makes a lot of sense. Now, if I was a baseball player and I needed to, you know, obviously drive that straight across, you know, the plate, then I would say that, you know, in that sense, that baseball player is probably gonna wanna spend quite a bit of time maybe in that direction, in that plane. Um, it's just not as applicable for me. So again, this is something I might check once in a while, but I'm not actually here probably as much as I'm high to low, and maybe I might even be a little bit more low to high. Okay, now low to high, I would say is again, a little bit functional because it's it's a little more of a lift as, a, as far as a movement's concerned. So again, I could, I could play around my angles. I could be here, you know, I could be here. And again, I could try and just come across my body. So I'm doing a lift like this. You know, I could let myself follow it in some. And then I could scoop it up, okay? I could come at an angle maybe here, and I could do almost more like a scooping style movement. And again, sometimes I'll just play around with those angles. So, you know, if I was over here on this side, you know, I might do a scoop for one set. Maybe I would do another exercise, say if I was supersetting, come back, and I could do something across here, okay? One trick you can also use is, you know, if you're a little more limited in your angles, if I wanted this to be even farther down for some reason, then this thing will allow me to go. I could always stand on the box, you know, if I wanted to as well. And, you know, every now and then I might pepper that in just for fun. So sometimes really when I think about chops, for me, they're more kind of for fun exercises and to, and to check my strength. Sometimes I'll even use them a little bit to warm up. I think it's a great way to kind of get your core and hips going if you need to kind of prep them for some other exercises and activity. Um, sometimes I might even throw them in as a burnout at the end, you know, just to get a little extra core activation if I didn't feel like I really worked core much that day or that week. 
I might, I might throw something like this in towards the end. And so again, just to show you guys, you know, if I were to come in here, one of the exercises I do like with this one is, as opposed to just doing a scoop, is if I did a punch, okay? So I can kind of come in here for a little more forcefully. Okay, notice how I'm kind of pivoting that back foot a little bit, okay? I think that's a pretty useful way to just kind of, you know, just something cool that you can increase a little bit of, again, that pushing, pressing strength, you know, almost like the way you'd press with a landmine, only in this case, I have a little more, more of a rotational component. So it's just kind of a cool way to mix it up. So I like that exercise as well. So this is kind of my low to high, you know, some of my favorites, I guess I would call it. Um, the thing I should mention to you guys is, if you go on to whatsatstrap.com, there's a pretty cool video he posts where he just cuts from one to the other. I think he's got like more than 20 different exercises. No dialogue, it's just, you know, basically one to the other. So if you guys want a few more ideas about what to do, I would recommend checking that out. I wouldn't necessarily say I spend a lot of time in any one plane specifically. I like to kind of just be a generalist, make sure I feel good in, you know, most planes. But again, I'm trying to also be mindful of the fact that I want to be easy on my back. I don't want to spend too much of a toll on my body as I'm doing some of this stuff, or maybe I don't even want to take away too much from some of my other exercises, right? So it depends on what you're doing in the context of your whole workout. So I wouldn't necessarily be spending a whole bunch of time on this because that's going to take away from, you know, if I'm trying to bring up my, my chest or if I'm trying to bring up my leg, whatever else I'm trying to do in that week, you know, you also have to think about, well, how do I program something like this, right? And so that's why I was saying sometimes I'll do it kind of as a warm up because I'm not really trying to build pure strength on this. So, you know, even if I get just a little stronger on these and my strength is symmetrical, you know, I think that's probably pretty good. Um, again, I might do it as a burnout at the end just because I want some extra core emphasis, stuff like that. Um, sometimes I'll do it again just to kind of check my strength, make sure everything's looking symmetrical. And that's that tends to be how I deal with chops. You know, I don't necessarily think that somebody needs to do a whole battery of chops, you know, every week. I think that's probably a little bit excessive. Again, unless you're somebody who, you know, is an athlete and does need those movements, that'd be a little bit of a different conversation. Now, when it comes to rehab, I do think there are some applications to, again, building up that anti-rotational strength. So, you know, I wouldn't start somebody, like I said, low to high. But, you know, there's no reason why I couldn't come into mid. And again, maybe just start with something very gentle. You know, like a paloff press type of variation, for instance, if I wanted to. And so gradually with that individual, what I'm going to be doing is trying to increase amplitude, meaning the you know, degree of movement, and then gradually increasing loading, getting them eventually working in planes where they're fighting more against gravity. Because people are going to be lifting, you know, it's not uncommon at all. You know, somebody's going to grab a sack of groceries and they're going to be picking up at an angle. You know, bending, lifting, and twisting is something we always tell people with back pain to be not, you know, not to do. The reality is in real life, people tend to still do it. So really what I think is probably a better solution than saying, you know, don't ever do that. Uh, you know, unless somebody's just hyper vigilant and they really can do that. And there are people who are out there that can. But I think I'd rather try to build up somebody's strength in those planes to try to make them a little more resilient for those movements. So I'd say, you know, let's not do a whole bunch of that stuff. Uh, you know, if you have a horrible back and you've had back surgeries, but at the same time, let's try to see if we can build up your strength a little bit just so that, you know, if real life comes your way and you have to do those things or you just inadvertently it slips your mind and you end up doing that, you know, hopefully you'll be able to kind of weather that storm. And so, again, I'm not necessarily going to train somebody, you know, in, in a way that's going to hurt their back, but I want to make them a little bit more resilient. And so that's my two cents on sort of training. I think sometimes we do, you know, people a disservice as rehab specialists, as physical therapists, whatever, you know, you want to call yourself and that we're a little shy about hurting that person. And so, we try to avoid, you know, heavy lifting. We try to avoid lifting and things of that nature. And so what ends up happening is then they end up doing that in real life. They end up hurting themselves because they just, you know, they can't do it. They haven't trained themselves for it. So I think, you know, we want to make sure we're also building up strength in ways that's going to represent real life for an individual. So that's what I'll say on rotational strength and power. Um, you know, as far as we have um, any comments below, let me know. I may eventually add, you know, a little more specific video talking about or maybe demonstrating some of the stuff I'm talking about now. Just want to give kind of a broad concept overview for this video. So hopefully you guys liked it. Uh, definitely let me know. And again, subscribe if you like this stuff. And as always, I hope you guys have some fun.